I'm a black American. I'm proud to be a black American. I am proud of my race. I am proud of who I am. I have a lot of pride in who I am and dignity. And if people hear a lie long enough, people believe it. If people have lied on me, I'm a black American and I'm proud of it. And I'm honored of it. Have, are, is your skin lighter because you don't like being black? Okay, number one, this is the situation. I have a skin disorder that destroys the pigmentation of the skin. It's something that I cannot help. Okay, but when people make up stories that I don't want to be who I am, it hurts me. So it is. It's a problem for me, okay? I can't control it, mm -hmm. okay? Chantelle Winnie is a Canadian fashion model and public spokesperson on the skin condition vitiligo, the same skin condition that afflicted Michael Jackson. Chantelle Brown Young is a genuine beauty, but as you can see, there's something very unique about her. The 19-year-old has vitiligo, a rare skin condition where patches of skin lose pigment, embracing the condition that has given her perhaps the most distinctive look in the modeling industry. I don't think I understood that I had vitiligo until I was like maybe in middle school um, and that's only because that's when you know bullying started for me. She says she was bullied at school. Kids called her zebra girl. Others called her a cow. Michael again spoke of his vitiligo in February 2003 during his interview with Martin Bashir, but this segment was maliciously edited out from the broadcasted interview, cutting it out during the final editing of the special Living with Michael Jackson, clearly manipulating the final message which was a rumor. They said I was putting on cream to make myself lighter. That's not true. I have a bit of you have, now, a, you have a condition. Michael Jackson did use bleaching creams, but it was to blend the blotches into his natural skin color. This was not to become white. For people who suffers from vitiligo on more than 50% on their skin, depigmentation maybe is the best choice for treating the condition. In 2003, during the special private home movies, broadcast by Fox, Michael told again about his vitiligo, referring to the fact that he could not expose himself to the sun and that he had to use an umbrella to protect himself from harmful UV rays. Vitiligo patients are sensitive to sunlight and they have higher risk of skin cancer. Most people thought of Michael's use of umbrella was an eccentricity. But for him, it was a necessity. Oh yeah, I love the water parks. I wish I could do that more often these days, but I'm allergic to the sunlight. I, I really can't go in the sun. I have to have an umbrella, but then there are times when you just look. It looks like so much fun, you just say, forget it. I'm going. I have to, have, I have to do this. One can only imagine the traumatizing psychological impact his vitiligo caused to Michael Jackson, considering his highly scrutinized life. By a cruel world that refused to believe he had vitiligo and ridicule him until death, and beyond his death. And confirming this, Michael Jackson reasserted and underlined that he was suffering with vitiligo, but it seemed that few believed him and the disease was used against him. Michael Jackson never wanted to become white. Michael Jackson was proud to be a black artist and he was proud of his Afro-American origin, as he underlined in more than one occasion. I'm a black American. I'm proud to be a black American. I am proud of my race. I am proud of who I am. I have a lot of pride in who I am and dignity. And if people hear a lie long enough, people believe it. If people have lied on me, I'm a black American and I'm proud of it. And I'm honored of it. You only have to imagine waking day by day to find increasing patches of blotchy pale skin to understand how traumatic that was for anyone, let alone someone so image conscious. Jermaine Jackson Well, I think in 1993 nobody knew anything about vitiligo. And the controversy was Michael Jackson kept getting whiter and whiter and whiter and whiter and nobody understood why but anybody who knows Michael Jackson will tell you that when you are up close to him I mean he, he has 
had absolutely no pigmentation in his skin. So you can see all the way through to, you are looking at his veins when you look at his hand. When you look at him, you are seeing through to the, to the, to the blue veins and they're, you know, very, 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 very apparent. And at first, that's a, that's a startling thing, you know. Nobody ever talks about that, but it's, it's kind of, it, it takes, it takes you back at first. So you're like looking at a person who is almost, um, like translucent. It's like looking through skin. It's like looking through skin. Vitiligo. When pathology becomes slander. A few months later, his confession of vitiligo during the Oprah interview was used against him to support false criminal charges of pedophilia brought by Evan Chandler, Jordan Chandler's father. Jordan often spent time with Michael Jackson on several occasions and events. Pathology became slander. His Oprah confession of vitiligo was perfect the ammunition to claim that Jordan Chandler saw Michael naked. In fact, it's well known that there is a particularly high incidence of vitiligo on the genital area. So it was easy for the indictment to claim that there were some white patches on Michael's genitals. Michael was subjected to a thorough and humiliating search of his body in an effort to follow up on Jordan Chandler's claim that Michael had blotches on his genitals. Jordan Chandler testified that Michael was circumcised. Michael Jackson autopsy report revealed. The penis appears uncircumcised. Jordan Chandler was lying. A few days later, Michael defended himself with a live statement from Neverland. I ask all of you to wait and hear the truth before you label or condemn me. Don't treat me like a criminal, because I am innocent. I have been forced to submit to a dehumanizing and humiliating examination by the Santa Barbara County Sheriff Department and the Los Angeles Police Department earlier this week. They served a search warrant on me which allowed them to view and photograph my body including my penis, my buttocks, my lower torso, thighs, and any other error that they wanted. They were supposedly looking for any discoloration, spotting, blotches, or other evidence of a skin color disorder called vitiligo, which I have previously spoken about. The warrant also directed me to cooperate in any examination of my body by their physician to determine the condition of my skin, including whether I have vitiligo or any other skin disorder. The warrant further stated that I had no right to refuse the examination or photographs, and if I failed to cooperate with them, they would introduce that refusal at any trial as an indication of my guilt. It was the most humiliating ordeal of my life, one that no person should ever have to suffer. And even after experiencing the indignity of this search, the parties involved were still not satisfied and wanted to take even more pictures. It was a nightmare, a horrifying nightmare. But if this is what I have to endure to prove my innocence, my complete innocence, so be it. Jermaine Jackson talks about Michael's vitiligo. March 10, 2005 trial period. Michael Jackson was rushed to the hospital. He had slipped and fallen while stepping out of the shower. The fall left him with excruciating back pain. Judge Rodney Melville ordered Michael to appear in court within one hour. Or else, the judge said, he would revoke Michael's bail. Not having enough time to change his clothes, Michael rushed from the hospital to the court, wearing his pajama bottoms. Some hours earlier, Michael's brother Jermaine visited him in the hospital. This is the report of his visit. Michael pulls at his jacket buttons and starts struggling out of its sleeves. It falls off his shoulders and hangs backward from his upper arms, revealing his bare chest. He is sobbing. Look at me, look at me. I'm the most misunderstood person in the world. He breaks down. He stands in front of us, head bowed, as if he feels shame. It is the first time I have seen the true extent of his skin condition, and it shocks me. His self-consciousness is such that he has kept his body hidden from even his family until now. His torso is light brown, splashed with vast areas and blotches of white, spreading across his upper chest. One patch of white covers his ribs and stomach, another runs down his side and blotches cover one shoulder and upper arm. 
There is more white than brown, his natural skin color, he looks like a white man splashed with coffee. Because I just can't stop